Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I quickly wanted to start up another series on design patterns, starting from creational and then eventually cover all the 23 gang of four patterns. Because uh, the way I see it, the more design patterns you know, the better you become as a developer and uh, the better you become in writing code which are maintainable. So keep in mind that every design pattern that you learn here is going to help you solve a specific problem. And then you have to kind of identify which design pattern goes where and which use case suits which uh, design pattern. So let's uh, quickly jump into it. So I've already created a folder and I've created a project and um, inside this project I've created a creational folder under which uh, there is a singleton class which is already being created. So uh, before getting into what uh, or how a singleton class works let's maybe discuss about why you need a singleton design pattern so uh, the main question which which can come into your mind uh, is why not use static classes so which is uh, a very good question i would say so when we use a static class the first thing that you have to keep in mind is that even though it in a way behaves like a singleton instance meaning that uh, the uh, the static remains same throughout the entire application cycle, you have to keep in mind that there are no objects associated with it. And you would eventually, and even if you need to dispose that specific static, you cannot do it because there is no instance and static are never memory managed. And uh, that is uh, why, uh, that is one reason wherein you can use uh, a singleton design pattern. A common implementation is logging platforms, logging frameworks. Uh, which uses um, a singleton design pattern there. So you might have noticed if you use iLogger or Log4Net, you there is a method uh, which you can get basically called as maybe create create logger, and this would uh, this would give you an instance of an iLogger. So th that is basically a singleton design pattern in action. So yeah, let's get started and let's see how we can actually implement uh, a singleton design pattern. So the first thing you need to keep in mind is that a singleton design pattern would always have a private constructor. Let's quickly create a private constructor. So this is a private constructor. So another question here is why do we need to mark this constructor as private? So as you all know, private is an access modifier. So access modifier would allow us uh, to control or uh, or it gives us the ability to expose certain methods or certain functions within a method. So in C sharp there are uh, uh, one of the access modifier is private and what this ideally does is that this prevents uh, any uh, other uh, any callee from other classes to access it. So uh, this basically means that private would ensure that I can only access this constructor within this class. So, and uh, I can, we can maybe dig deeper. Let's say that I'm creating an object here and I'm trying to create a new instance of this specific class. All right, so this would ideally error out because the, the constructor is marked as private, which means that if I need to create an object, I would need to create it within this specific class. So, and how would, how would we do that? So the first step or the second step is that we need to create a static method within this class. And this is this static method is going to return a type of the singleton class which we just created now. And let's just call this method get instance. All right. And okay. And uh, we also would need a variable which is of a type again of a singleton class. Let's call it uh, instance here. And let's make this private and let's make this static. And the reason why this is static is because this the method that I am going to use this variable is going to be static. And yeah, uh, first thing what we need to do is we need to check if that specific uh, variable which we created, uh, that is instance, has any instance created here. 
so instead of doing it with is equal to c sharp as another operator called as s which basically makes a comparison so uh, let's just check if instance is null and if it is null then you would need to create an instance here just basically nothing but a, a singleton class and then we just need to return it so what if uh, it is not null then we basically return return the instance which is already initialized so this code block summarizes the bare minimum code that you need to implement a singleton design pattern so there is one specific flaw here is that this specific code is not thread safe so what do you mean by thread safe is that uh, let's say that there are two threads trying to access or trying to get an instance of this specific class and it's since it is in different threads each thread has its own context and when the thread comes in the context of instance would always be would be null so what uh, we need to do is we need to introduce some sort of synchronization primitive and uh, one such thing is the lock which we can use so lock basically takes in an object and holds a lock and then the others when they try to access it uh, uh, they would only be allowed to go through if they acquire the lock first so let's create an object here and let's just call it lock and uh, since this is an object let's initialize the object here and we need to check or we need to lock this and lock is actually a keyword uh, in c sharp and uh, that performs the actual synchronization primitive for us and yeah and we should mark this uh, as private uh, and static And let's just copy this code. Yep. So there you have it. Uh, singleton design pattern. Yeah. Thank you.